And here I am cooking some sausages and eggs. I'm going to put those in a wrap. And that's how it looks. <clears throat> this is the first time I've cooked in it. Got the overhead sauce pan going with the light. Uh, I've got the door open. I'm actually back here again at the Nyora Recreation Reserve and Raceway. Um, I just don't feel confident riding it on the highway yet because of those mirrors. I can't see around the sides of the, the semi-trailer and the turn signals are not there yet. Um, so I'm just going to stay local for a little bit until those things arrive. Uh, the mirrors were a, a mistake I made. I uh, was rushing and uh, I ordered them without actually measuring the, what I needed, um, as I said, because I was rushing, so it was a mistake there, but, you know, they didn't cost that much, I think they were $25 or something, that's not a big deal, um, but now I have to wait for the right ones to come, so we'll do that, uh, and when that's done, I can go for a real good ride then and really yeah, get stuck in it. And uh, yeah, I'll have other videos in due course about the travels, etc. And um, yeah, soon I'll fire up this dual car. I don't know if I'll have a shower here because it's still pretty early, a lot of people walking around. I mean, I don't, you know, I have my underpants on. I don't go, you know, commando or anything, to scare the locals, but uh, I'm not sure if I feel comfortable doing it, so we'll see. But I will show you how it works anyway. All right, guys. Ciao. Just giving you a bit of a squiz uh, in here at night time from this direction as well. You can see there's the uh, one of the power boards uh, sockets there and the switch for the easy solar I've got some USB that's a USB plug there that I've drilled into it it's just charging up me vape battery and that's it those LEDs are on full now I'm going to just uh, here outside of a man shed here at Nyora I don't know if you can see that sign anyway uh, I want to show you these uh, these lights but to be able to do that I need to get the iPad and um, oh, okay, I should have realised that taping this and trying to use the voice activation on the phone is not going to work. So here we go. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Boom. Hey Google. We're in. So here's the inside. Hopefully Google can hear me from here. Hey Google, turn on exterior light. Got it. Turning on the exterior running light. There we go. Inside, outside. There it is. And also, when you close the door. That's going to be very noticeable at night time, especially from the back <clears throat> to some degree. But I will be getting another light under here that flashes red as well in uh, down the track. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, it's getting pretty dark here now. It's about ten past eight, quarter past eight, and um, I'm just going to. Uh, Go to bed in a minute, maybe watch a bit of a movie or something. Go to bed. Hey Google, turn off exterior light. Sure, turning the exterior running light off. Ah, oh, you're a love. Thank you, darling. Alright. <laughs> Alright guys, see ya. I, uh, I'm just having a bit of a lie down. It's still daylight outside. Uh, I'm not sure what the time is, probably after 7. And uh, the outside temperature here in Nyora is 17 degrees 
at, sorry, 13 degrees, and inside uh, the quad module that I'm in now is 17 degrees, and that's without a heater on or anything, so the insulation is working a treat, mate. Boo! Nice and cosy. Last night I had the best sleep in here. Uh, so cosy and warm. Um, I'll flip this camera around and I'll just show you around the room a bit. Okay, here we are flipped around and uh, there's my feet at the end there. Um, there's the LEDs, one of the roof LEDs. Those things hanging down are for when I get some more of those um, vehicle storage bags, backseat storage bag things. Uh, here is a look, oh, it's actually gone up. It is 19, I don't know how well you can see that. It's 19.5 degrees in here now, and that's shot up because I actually had the door open at the end for quite a while, I was sitting there for an hour, just, I fell into a YouTube hole, <laughs> and I was just sitting there watching YouTube. So, 65% relative humidity, and the, um, where's it gone? The bloody CO2 monitor, which was here a second ago, has now disappeared, here it is. CO2 monitor, oh, hang on, the light's not good. CO2 monitor reads zero, so that's good. But, as I said, I've only just closed the door in the last five, sort of, ten minutes, so I'll give it a few hours and see if there's any reading at all. I don't think there will be, but you never know. So, anyway, uh, really happy with this. I did take it for another spin around here, a quite a good one, around just this oval sports recreation thing where I'm at. And um, I feel a lot better on it today, the quad. Actually, I'll spin this around again. Hang on a sec. Yeah, I feel a lot better riding the quad today with the trailer on and even with all the weight. It uh, was a bit concerning yesterday because... Um, I was really struggling to get up, get up a hill, but the actual motor itself, the Bafang, is and the roll-off sp speed hub, the internally geared speed hub, are working a treat. Uh, as you may or may not know, the roll-off speed hub is really good for torque. It's over five hundred percent, and um, the Bafangs are also really good. The mid drives are the better ones, from my perspective, are really good for and torquey as well. And there are no issues there at all. It, it's just I need to get used to going up hills a lot slower. I mean, when I related it to how I was on the Magnum, uh, the Green Speed Magnum trike with a kids trailer on the back, and that was fully laden. Uh, I was quite slow in that anyway, so the, the the difference is, at the end of the day, with all the years I've been living rustically and riding around on bikes with camp and trailers and everything, the wonderful thing about this setup is you don't have to set up a tent at the end of the day, and uh, if you get tired, it doesn't matter where you are, if you can pull off to the side of the road somewhere and, and it's safe, you're not going to get, you know hit by a car or a truck or get in anyone's way and you just pull over and have a sleep or you want to cook something it's right there you don't have to set anything up it's all there ready to go and uh you know just i had people stop me out in the street today when i was riding to get here um just can't believe what they've seen one guy lovely chap a farmer you know he he pulled me over he said um i saw you turn in the corner he said i couldn't work out really what the hell it was and then he said and then you actually turned the corner and i could see the solar panels on the roof he said i just had to come and say good day and take some photos so he took a bunch of photos to take home and show his son and uh, so that was pretty cool and then i was down here at the the cricket nets i made a mistake yesterday in an upload i thought they were um tennis courts at the cricket nets Anyway, the boys are down there doing some training, some practice, cricket practice, and um, I was there um, 
cooking some food, I think, uh, or I had, I don't know, just finished. Anyway, they were there and had a bit of a chat with them, and you know they were asking some questions as well. So it's it's a real uh, conversation piece to say the least. It 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 it's, you know it piques people's interest and curiosity, and people ask questions, and and that's what it's all about for me. I just want to show people that, um, you know, you don't have to hock your soul and buy into this ridiculous interest slavery system um, that's been in place for far too long. And it's really stopping us uh, as a race, a, a cohesive uh, race, moving forward. Um, and that's why I do what I do. I love living like this. Uh, I just cannot justify paying rent or you know hocking my soul for a mortgage which I've done a few times before caused me nothing but stress and that's another reason why I'm doing what I'm doing um, I just rode past a petrol station here the other day it was a dollar 93 cents per litre and uh, I rode past and I just couldn't believe it mate it's not getting any better it's actually getting worse and i hear on the grapevine that it's going to go up well over to two dollars a litre very shortly so that's good news um i mean good news for me that i don't have to bloody participate in this nonsense anymore and uh and i can get fit and uh, have adventures this way and hopefully show some other people that uh you know there is, there are other ways to live if you can minimise. Uh, when I say minimise, I mean I've got most of my stuff stored in a storage shed. You know, it's kind of like a, a second home. I mean, I don't sleep in there. I don't do anything in there other than I was working on this project a little bit in there. I have all my tools in there and stuff. So, you know, if something goes wrong, I can just go there and fix it. You know. Um, anyway, that's kind of what's been going on and once I get the turn signals for this and a few other bits and pieces the portholes but mainly the turn signals and the new mirrors I'll feel a lot more confident to go on to a main road uh, in the shoulder of a main road and go from campsite to campsite that way so until those things get here I'll just be really local um, around this area I won't be going too far and I certainly won't be riding this uh, rig at night time anywhere around on any roads at the moment. Even with the running lights, I just think it's it's just too risky at the moment. I don't have enough reflective stuff happening on the semi-trailer and I can't see behind me at all at the moment. So it's it's too dangerous. So, um, yeah, I just thought I'd, you know, let you into my world a little bit more, a bit into the psychology and why I do the things I do. I've mentioned previously in other uploads that um, ever since I was a little kid I just thought there was you know something not right with the way that I was living and I saw a movie called Storm Boy and then I saw David Gulpalil in a movie called Walkabout and it just piqued my interest and I just wanted to run away with the indigenous um, tribes for for a long time, and um, it just it never happened. And then I read a book years later, um, a book about a hermit that lived on the Murray, and his name was Possum. I think the book was called A Man Called Possum, and you know his sort of exploits, and that was absolutely amazing as well. So it wasn't until I was really in my 40s, sort of middle 40s, that that kind of by chance or however you want to look at it, I was kind of forced to leave a place where I was living and, and quite rapidly. I, la I allowed myself to do that and I lived in a car on Mornington Beach for nearly four months, station wagon, and I was working three jobs. I was having two two part-time jobs that equated to full-time hours and I was also the emergency uh, online uh, operator for a disability agency and uh, I was doing all of these jobs while living in a station wagon. Suffice it to say it was an absolute nightmare mate 
and um, I was getting calls in the middle of the night and trying to um, be professional but I just didn't have a working space in a station wagon so anyway I had a few vehicle upgrades and then I lived with a mate in Venus Bay for nearly a year and then I bought a block of land and was building a shipping container and then uh, my hip got so bad uh, that I couldn't even walk properly anymore even with walking sticks I couldn't couldn't walk very well uh, so and then I started getting letters from the council saying what are you doing what are you doing and even though I had a building permit it was a lot of stress it was a lot of pressure and there was no um, because of COVID elective surgery had been put on hold and there was no sort of indication of when it was going to um, take up again so I sold up and um, went into this project I, I knew by right uh, by bicycle riding that, that that did not put any pressure on my hip and it was actually uh, not bad at all so I went into this project you know I love the, the small house movement and you could say that this is taking it to a whole new level really I mean it's electric you don't need gasoline to take this around um, and you get fit and travel at the same time so that's why I've done what I've done and uh, yeah stay tuned for some more adventures uh, I'll show you the gas bottle and the dual car tomorrow oh, sorry I, the dual car tomorrow I forgot the gas bottle it's at the storage shed so I'll have to show you that tomorrow but later I'll um, take you outside and show you the running lights hopefully you get a bit of footage there see you guys hey guys uh, here I am in coral draw I'm just um, done up uh, the off-grid mojo um, logo the the label for, for doing some stickers I've just finished it uh, <clears throat> this text uh, that you see here is a text that I got I purchased this off a guy called hydro 74 in America and this text this font is called H74 the golden something what's it called the golden uh, anyway <laughs> the golden dragon or something I don't know anyway I've exported it out and I've cut some of it already and I'm just about to do this mojo bit now because uh, I imported it incorrectly into Cricut the Cricut cutter and the Explore Air 2 Cricut cutter and now I've got to um, I've amended it and I'm going to cut it out now which will, you will see and then I'll put it on the trailer and you'll see that as well cheers uh, also, I um, had a leak in the water tank, not a big one, but a leak around the uh, bung plug connection at the bottom. It's leaking a little bit and it's not great, so I'm going to tend to that today. So I'm going to cut it now, I'm going to turn you over to my gimbal and take you off uh, record screen. Mm -hmm. 